Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, <coughs> excuse me, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be available for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open uh, to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for anyone who's here not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So we provide services and resources and training and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So we have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, uh, really our only criteria is something to do with libraries. Uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. We have, um, we do some presentations um, from sessions with Nebraska Library Commission staff talking about um, programs and resources and things we have here through the commission, but we also bring on guest speakers and that's what we have today. Um, with us today is Ann Price. Good morning, Ann. Good morning. <laughs> And she is um, a member of the Nebraska's Golden Sower Award Committee, um, as well as Children's Librarian at North Platte Public Library here in Nebraska. And um, I invited Anne to come on the show. This is a session that I saw colleagues of hers do something talking about um, what's happening with our Golden Sower Award here in Nebraska at our Youth Services Retreat back in September. End of August. <laughs> it's been a long year, <laughs> and uh, um, I asked you know, to have come on to Encompass Live so we can spread the word more about what's going on with um, the Golden Solar Award or the changes that have been happening late recently. So I'm just going to hand it over to you and uh, take it away and tell us all about it. All right, sounds good. Um, so as Krista mentioned, this will be an update on the Golden Solar Award. Um, hopefully, if you've been following the award for a while, this will um, help demystify some of the changes that have happened in the last couple of years. And if you're new to the Golden Sower Award, um, mm -hmm. hopefully this will give you some information just about what the award is and how you can maybe incorporate it in your library or school. So really briefly, we will start off with who I am. So um, my name is Ann Price. As Krista mentioned, I am the Children's Librarian at the North Platte Public Library. Um, previously, I have served on the Land of Enchantment Book Award Committee in New Mexico. I've only been with the Golden Sower Award for about a year at this point, um, but hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions you might have, and I hope I have some good information for you going forward. So first we'll start off with what is the Golden Sower Award? Uh, the Golden Sower Award is the Children's Choice Literary Award for the state of Nebraska. Um, it is a full committee under the Nebraska Library Association, meaning that members of the committee are current NLA members and the committee chair is appointed by the NLA Executive Committee. Um, if you were familiar uh, previously, the award was part of schools, children, and young people mm -hmm. under the Nebraska Library Association. Um, but this is just a change, um, gives us a little bit um, a little bit more oversight to the committee. It's so, always been a part of NLA, but just moved Always around. been a part of NLA, not always a full committee, that's all. <laughs> so, um, a little bit about our vision and mission. The vision is to foster a lifelong enjoyment of reading for pleasure in Nebraska's youth. And our mission is to empower young people to experience literature of various styles, emotions, situations, and characters. Um, that mirror themselves and the outside world and foster respect and compassion for others. There is a full organizational document that is linked here in this slide if you wanted to see our full list of values and kind of how, how the committee itself is organized and that sort of thing. And I'll mention, since you were talking about the slides, so I didn't mention it before, um, when the recording is available um, later of the show, you, we will also have a link to the slide presentation as well. So I'm um, gonna have access to these links and all the information in it. Yes, absolutely. All right, so moving on to the lists. The current lists that we have are Little Bluestem, Honeybee, and Meadowlark. And these have taken the place of 
the lists previously were called picture book, chapter book, and novels. So Little Blue Stem is intended for those grades K through two, so that would take the place of our picture book list. Honey Bee is what took the place of chapter books for that grades three to five. And then Meadowlark took the place of novels intended for grades six through eight. Um, I know this is, this is of the changes that have happened, this is one of the bigger ones. Um, mm -hmm. In rebuilding some of the structure around the award, the committee looked at a lot of how other states were structuring their awards. And many of them were using state symbols in differentiating their lists. Um, for example, the Land of Enchantment uses Roadrunner, Coyote, Lizard, and Black Bear. Wyoming uses uh, Little Buckaroo, Indian Paintbrush, and Soaring Eagle. So the reasoning for some of this is twofold. Um, we don't want to limit students to what lists they can read from. And it also allows for more variety of literature. So Little Blue Stem in particular can span into like beginning readers and transitional chapter books, whereas picture books sets us with slightly more limiting parameters. True. And next up, we have the manual. So this was something I didn't know existed until I came on the committee, was that there is a manual for the Golden Sower Award um, that can be purchased on Teachers Pay Teachers. The cost is $15, and it includes activities, discussion questions um, for all three of the lists. There are also digital downloads like bookmarks, ballots, and other printables you can use. Um, if you are part of a school district that would need multi person access, you can contact the committee for a special price and get a file that can be uploaded to an internet or a shared server. Um, I know the Millard School District has done this for the last few years and has had success with it. Uh, let's see. Uh, some things that are coming up soon. Voting is now open for the 23 to 24 Golden Sower Awards. So those ballots went live today, November 1st. Yeah. You can yeah, vote. we're happy to be able to coordinate that. Coincidentally, November 1st is a Wednesday, so. <laughs> yes, I thought it was very serendipitous that it all yeah. worked out that way. Um, but <laughs> those, those ballots are live for you to start inputting. Um, all of the information and guidelines for practices on voting are listed on the voting page, which this link does go to. Um, the list for next academic year, uh, which would be academic year 24-25, um, has been finalized and it will be announced during Nebraska Libraries Week, which is the week of November 12th through the 18th. So in a couple weeks, you will get that full list. Uh, and then the last kind of big update we have is that we have a young adult list that will begin for school year 25-26. And we did let uh, our young adults vote on what they wanted to be called and they chose Bald Eagle. So the Bald Eagle list will begin um, for that 25-26 school year. I know, I remember you were looking for um, what to call the new one. Um, I think that's cool that you had the actual, the teens decide what they wanted to have it be. <laughs> yes. So. Um, so how, so how, how, how is um, how the Bald Eagle one, that's waiting for another two years then? It is, well, it is because uh, we are currently reading for school year 25-26. So the, that okay. selection committee that reads the books and kind of gives us our preliminary list is reading books for so that to be ready yeah. yeah okay okay so that's if you are interested in helping make decisions on that list i will move on to my next slide yes <laughs> um so there is as i mentioned i'm a member of the the nebraska golden silver award committee we also have a selection committee so that selection committee is who reads books and puts books up um, as possibilities to be on the golden silver nominees um, the only parameters we have for that is that you must post four reviews to Goodreads, to the Goodreads group annually to remain active, and you must vote every other year. Um, there is a Google form if you are interested in serving as a selection committee member. You can read for one list, you can read for all the lists, it's up to you. If you read a lot of literature for youth and you would like to contribute in that way, we would love to have you. Um, there is also the award committee is... Um, right now fairly full but it coordinates the nomination list those final lists the voting and the manual creation and we do the merchandise sales so the stickers and things like that that are available for purchase are through the committee and if you are interested in participating on the committee in any capacity um nla golden sower at nebraska libraries.org is who you would reach out to um, we are currently in the process of appointing an interim chair um, for the next few months until we get to january when we will hopefully have a new person in place. Um, but as as mentioned, uh, there is plenty of room on the selection committee. That's, in my opinion, the really fun part is getting to read all of the books and put forward what you think is a really, 
really great literature um, mm -hmm. for the award. Um, there is a Google form we do ask, I believe, for your um, whether you're a teacher or librarian, kind of what your affiliation is um, that way. But otherwise, the form is open um, for anyone to complete. And with that, I will open us up to see if we have questions. Hmm. I know that I went through a lot of information very quickly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 of course. Um, yes, if anybody um, has any questions, uh, type into the question section. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about uh, what's happening new in the ward, what's um, been happening, how to get involved, um, more details about that. Um, I, do, I do have a question here. Um, you mentioned um, merchandise. Uh, is um, is that something that's not available? How does that all work? What's the merchandise that's available and how is that all? Yeah. Yes, um, the merchandise, let, let me look really quick. <laughs> okay, I know there's been things you can purchase. Is there things that are available on the website, through the website or do you? I believe every, I believe our full inventory is available on the website, but let me double okay. check just in case I speak out of turn. <laughs> Yes. So, um, do you want to share the? Um, if you share your screen again, you can yes. show the website if you wanted to. Yeah. And go because I think people, yeah, people want to see that would like to see what the website's got um, has on it now. Let's see. Maybe. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yes. Perfect. So here is our screen, uh, and over, over here in the upper right hand corner, mm -hmm. there is a store. Um, there is kind of. A, a lot of information up at the top right now we are compiling um most most things are being compiled like via email and things like that but you can purchase manuals there are various stickers for the award mm -hmm. um some of the other we also just have some older merchandise that feature um uh peter reynolds had made um a version of the golden silver award logo so we have some things that have his illustration on them things like that um just a few a few extra things that are kind of left over from previous years and things like that. So anything that you'd be interested in purchasing um, would be available here. And That's then, nice that none of this stuff actually has the years on it, so you can still use no. um, anything any year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So everything everything is still usable. Um, so and if you then, still have old merchandise, you can just keep using it too. Yep. If you <laughs> yep. So if you if you still have stickers, sticker design hasn't changed or anything like that. Um, I was going to say. On our homepage here at the bottom is the link to that PDF of our full mission and values uh -huh. statement and all of that. There's, like I said, a lot of information, but that's where it can be found. Mm -hmm. So right down here at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, can you give a little tour of the website since we're looking yeah. at it here. What but else? Since we're here, yeah. yeah. Um, so here are all of our current, all of our current lists. Um, the voting links that went live today. Mm -hmm. So right now, here's the one for Little Blue Stem. And all of those links went live this morning. Let's see what else. And have. the voting's through April. So voting got, through April, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. April 15th. So let's see. Um, and then the selection group that I was discussing, the people who do the reading, um, they have their own little about page here underneath about selection group and committee members. Um, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there is the link to the Google form if you would like to be part of the selection committee. Um, mm -hmm. There are uh, sort of a list of guidelines that we um, that we ask that people have some some interaction with education or with literature for young people, whether that means they're a teacher, or a librarian, a retired teacher or a librarian, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, committee members have to be current members in good standing with the Nebraska Library Association um, and such. Nice. There is. Um, so if, actually, this is something just to ask. Oh, I'm, you jumped right sure. to this. That's awesome. Someone asked, wanted to know how are the books actually nominated, the ones that are, you know, like how does it, how do you get started in the first place getting a book into this uh, yeah. possibly being um, one that might get voted so, on? So titles have to be published in the two years prior to um, to the year that the list comes out. So like 
things that are being read for 25, 26 will have to have 23, 24 publication dates. Um, titles have to have at least one positive re review, doesn't have to be a starred review, but a positive review um, from one of the following, whether it's Kirkus, Booklist, Horn Book, mm -hmm. School Library Journal, or Bulletin of the Center for Children's Books. Um, so first titles in a series may be nominated, sequels um, are eligible, companions are eligible, but not sequels. Yes, mm -hmm. companion books would be eligible, but not sequels. So the second mm -hmm. book in a series wouldn't be able to be nominated for an award only the first. Um, we do allow, there are spaces for publishers down here at the bottom. Publishers can submit books if they've got something that they feel passionately would fit really well with one of our lists. Um, they can propose that we read it and see for ourselves. Um, there is no pressure when people, when publishers submit titles to select that title for the final nomination list. It's just the same as anyone else recommending a title. Um, the Goodreads group is where most of the selection happens. Most people, most of the librarians, as they're reading things, you know, for their own collections and things like that, will be like, hey, I came across this that came out this year and it was really great. I'd like a mm -hmm. few other people to read it and see if you think it would be a contender for um, the next set of Gold and Silver books. So there's nothing about, um, so these can be books published anywhere and about anything. It doesn't have to have like a Nebraska connection. It doesn't have to have a Nebraska connection, cool. no. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And there are, we. you do have access to all previous winners and nominees. Um, mm -hmm. And that's available. It's a big widget, it takes a minute to load. But yeah, it is available by it's year. Been going on for a long time, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's the first year. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see what else. Um, someone wants to know, Ken, um, obviously not a previous winner, but um, if there's been, do you have um, winners and like honorable mentions or how does, what are, anything like that? I believe this last year there were honorable mentions. I'd have to go back and look. I want to say that we kind of, point out the things that have gotten the most votes and if something was a close second mm. that that would maybe be mentioned it wouldn't be like an official designation the way you have like Caldecott honor books and things sure. like that okay. um but if if say voting were particularly close that may be something that we mentioned because the question is can can I, I know you said the publication has been within the last two years but if someone is just honor like didn't win the first year maybe they were nominated they can be nominated again in that as long as it's still in that same time frame how is, is that allowed the same i would say the same author could be nominated again not the same book <laughs> if that makes oh, sense sure. Sure. so um i know dusty bowling um writes quite a bit and i don't she hasn't won yet she's on this year's list too but a previous novel of hers was also on last year's list that didn't win so she's up again for um another award no, um, no, no. yeah, yeah. okay Cool, cool. Um, someone else does have a question. I think this is either possibly for you and possibly for anyone else who's in the audience. Um, I will have an answer of how you all do this. Um, they want to know is do libraries typically, you know, using those labels, the stickers that you had with the spine labels and whatnot, um, mm -hmm. do they just do libraries typically label just the award winners or nominees as well? Um, I can tell you what the North Platte Public Library does. I can't I can't speak for what everyone else yeah, if does. anyone else wants to answer and say what you do at your library type in the question section and let us know how yeah. you all do it. um the way that um the way that we do it at North Platte is the spine label on the book has the regular information so picture book author's last name and then we also put an addendum for golden sower and then the year so the nominees all have golden sower 23 24 and then we mark out the winners once mm -hmm. the winners happen so then you'd be labeling nominees and award winners mm -hmm. you know, nominees as soon as you know what the nominees are yeah yep but i'd love to hear how other people do it <laughs> yeah yeah what does everybody else do um how do they promote um label their books type into the questions section and um let us know so this is uh something that a uh, question about um, this is for both um, public libraries and school libraries um, is or uh, 
I guess, how would that work for like promoting it in, in your library? Um, okay. Um, so for maybe. myself, for the public library, uh, we place all of, we place all of the nominees on display. We do some programming around them, not as much as I've seen some of the school districts do. Um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of, especially our elementary librarians do a lot of curriculum development around uh, the Golden Sower Manual and making sure that kids hear all of the things nominated on that little blue STEM list and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, I would say that is probably where we get the bulk of our votes from would be schools, but that's that's not preventing public libraries from taking from taking their own votes, or um, if you've got a large homeschooling population, homeschoolers sure. are able to vote too, that sort of thing. Yeah, because this is the Children's uh, Choice Award. All children mm -hmm. in Nebraska are eligible to vote. Yep. Um, you do have to have read um, four, four titles from, from the list that you are voting for. So mm -hmm. four, four items from either, you know, the little blue stem from mm -hmm. Honey B, you just have to have read four titles from that category. list to vote mm -hmm. for that list. And uh, the kids can vote in multiple categories? They can if, vote in multiple categories if they've read four books from multiple categories, absolutely. Okay, so there's no like age restriction on who's allowed to vote on <laughs> in each group? No, oh, no. Because nope. that's the thing too we talked about before a lot on the show um, is with uh, when like when Sally Snyder, our co coordinator of Children's News Services, comes on to give her book list, she's like, these are just general, um, you know, kids read at different levels and you never know who's going to jump up to a level or want to read something younger just because they like it and don't put them totally, you know, mm -hmm. they don't have to be totally in that box. Don't. It's okay if they cross that line <laughs> either way. <laughs> I had another question about that. I can't okay. Um, oh, so we do have some other, um, let me talk about what they do. Um, Oh, cool. Um, this one, they label all nominees um, with the year for kids to find easily, and they're in a K-5 school, and they do um, a book club um, for the Honeybee Books oh, um, nice. after school program. So that is something you could do too, either at a school or at a public library. You know, book clubs are hugely popular uh, now, and you could do a book club that's specifically for reading these books like I said you got to read multiple ones in a category so you could say we're gonna read you know whatever books you want to read in this one and, and talk about them amongst ourselves if you want to mm -hmm. absolutely that would be awesome um this is an, I was gonna look here because I think I just want to make sure I have to check and see if some of the we have book club kits that we loan here through the library commission and i'm not sure now there's so many things to search on here if we have we may have some of those as, as uh, and we have book club kits for all ages and and um levels at the library commission so if you wanted to see if you did want to do a book club check onto our book club kits page and see if we have a kit for any of these titles um, we're always getting new ones it's a huge program <laughs> mm -hmm. um i wish i could remember all the the, the uh, most recent statistics but just more and more all the time so uh you know you may need you need multiple copies of the books if you're going to do a book club mm -hmm. um, Oh, and the same person says uh, Lincoln City Libraries has all of the Golden Sword books in book bags. So uh, books together still to loan out. So yeah, if you're um, here in Lincoln and at a school or wanting to do something with homeschooling or something, yeah, look at Lincoln City Libraries to see their book bags um, about the Golden Sower titles. Awesome. All right. So uh, I see there's a link there for the current winners, the 2022 to 2023 winners. Mm -hmm. too. So those are the ones that were from, because I know there's been some transition times and everything, but um, we still the program still kept going, even though there was some changes being happening. Mm -hmm. right? we, did, we didn't miss any years, did we? Nope, no years were missed. Um, I think the only thing that uh, those 2022, 2023 winners, I don't believe got an award ceremony um, mm. the way previous years had gotten just with 
with everything going on, the, the bandwidth wasn't quite there to get that off the ground, so. Right. Um, and now, would that have been this year that they would have, the ceremony would have been? Because we didn't yeah. have, usually this kind of, this usually our Golden Sword Awards are done in conjunction with our Nebraska Library Association annual conference, mm -hmm. which the conference has gone to in every other year, um, to doing every other year now, and there wasn't one this year anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so we, the committee yeah. had discussed doing a virtual award ceremony. Yeah. Um, with with everything else going on, it just didn't quite happen this year. So we're hoping that we'll it's maybe fine. get that back for our 23, 24 nominees. So right, because it will be a conference next year, um, in Kearney, I think. Okay, I think that's um, right. Yeah. Um, so do you, oh, oh, you might not know yet. Would it still be in conjunction with the conference or something of its own? That that's still something the committee is discussing. <laughs> okay. I know some people it's it's nice to coordinate attending something that you're already you're already attending something and just adding on an extra activity or something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I know I've seen sometimes the authors will participate in mm -hmm. the award ceremony. Um, we've had that happen. I know I've seen that before, and the kids really like to have that interaction mm -hmm. um, with the authors, whether it's in person or virtual or whatever. I know I've seen it um, both ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, other questions? Does anybody have any other questions about um, the Golden Sword Award? What's been happening with it? Getting involved? Uh, you said that the committees are kind of full, but you're there. There's no. Is there any limit on how many people you have on your committees, or are you just not, try? Of course, you don't want to be too unwieldy. But <laughs> right. Uh, not that I know of. Is there? Is there a limit? Um, I just. I just know that our meetings seem to have a lot of people in them. <laughs> um, we do have a couple officer positions that are coming vacant. So if anyone's in particular, if anyone is interested in being a treasurer, that's something that we're looking for at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I wanna say there's between 12 and 15 of us at the moment on that Golden Sower <laughs> Award Committee. So not too bad yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. um, but, um, and like I said, we're we're always taking names and things like that. So, and again, if you would like to be involved, we will find we'll find ways to get you involved. Uh huh. Oh, great. Um, someone does have a question about the voting process for the the children. Uh, is this something where they just say? Do they need to like write up anything or explain like this is why I like this book or like give more of a or is it just a I pick this one? Mm -hmm. How does that, how does the actual, like what does the voting form actually look like? Is that something we can look at or? Yeah, so uh, the voting for the children looks just like the voting for the adults to put it in. Um, the ballots that come in your manual look a lot like they do here. It's just, you just select the title that you preferred. Okay. <laughs> so um, the, the ones that come included in the manual or I want to say like a half sheet and there's just like spots for kids to tick off their favorite. So. Oh, okay. So there's an online form and there's the paper that they can submit. So the online form is intended for the adults so for the teachers, for the librarians, because we want the total, what we would like people to do is total their, their school, their library's votes and put in the, their full numbers. Um, <sighs> On that oh, I'm sorry. Form. Okay, I get it. Yes. So the, yep. the children just fill out the paper one at their school or library, or whatever, and then mm -hmm. the adult in charge would go here after they've compiled everything and submit. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, um, but those those paper ballots look the same as as what's sure. here. So there's no you don't have to write up a little. You have to convince them that this is why you like this book. You just no, have to say. They, oh, this <laughs> no, they don't have to like write a review or anything like that. We just we just trust that they're like, yeah, this one was my favorite. <laughs> the review thing in Goodreads, that's for the adults when you're doing the nominating and, and yes, deciding correct. they're going to be the final selections. Yes, and I will say that selection committee, um, generally, generally the selection committee is asynchronous through Goodreads. They do meet in August every year to kind of make a final decision on the books for the next school year. So mm -hmm. the that 24-25 list that's already been decided, they met in August of 2023 to make those final decisions. So this is really looking ahead. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it is, it's, it's hard and sometimes it's hard to look that far look that far into the future but that's yeah, yeah. 
but you, you need to plan for that it's all you know with mm -hmm. all the reading that people need to do absolutely and figure out what I know the years I've I've in the past has been so which year are we talking about now? Which which year why <laughs> how far ahead yeah. are we? It's which ones can we vote on right now? Which ones are <laughs> yeah. 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 So um yeah, and then we do announce um we've discussed that the primary reason for announcing next year's titles during this school year is so that schools can plan to do their purchasing because most schools do the bulk of their purchasing in the fall. So um, true, true. Oh, right. Yes. If you want to have these books, if you don't already have them, you definitely yeah. definitely. And these are, like you said, these are new books, so they're not necessarily going to be something that is already in a collect in your collection mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. you come across. So, um, yet a good head start before you get into the the voting period. And there's something too. The voting is available open now, but the reading and the it can be done by these kids at any time. Possibly. At any time. Yep. Yeah. At any time. Mm -hmm. Um, but just you've got till April 15th to total up all of the votes from your uh, school. Uh, and I know, I know previously I've seen statistics on how many children or how many votes there have been. Do you have those, that information? I know it was like some huge numbers that were. <laughs> I, I don't have them handy at the moment. Um, I'd have to go back through some emails and find them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but it is, it is a pretty, it's a pretty good sized number, um, a pretty good sized number of kids vote every year. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, if I'm, I'm remembering from previous, uh, sessions we've done, I mean, we're talking something like 10 or 15,000. I mean, that's what we're talking about like that, yeah. Of, yeah. either of, of children or votes going in. I mean, it's mm -hmm. at least that much, um, possibly more. I don't want to say a big number, I'm not, but I know it was something like that was stunned to me I'm like oh that the kids are okay that is huge <laughs> um for something like uh like this mm -hmm. okay so you mentioned there are other you, other states that have done this before um and i didn't know that because sometimes people we talk about the golden Sword award and i more often, so often i get like a look of like there is there's a children's can choose things but it's in <laughs> other states too this is not something like mm -hmm. unique to us people this is i thought that was very interesting that people were like oh i never even heard of it well there's fifteen thousand kids in this state doing it <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes but you said other states have uh similar programs too mm -hmm. yeah. um yeah um so i've I've worked in four different states, and every state I've worked in has has had a, ver a version of a state children's choice award. And so, someone has a question: Then is this uh, uh, a national program, like something that comes out from ALA or something, or is is there is there any sort of overreaching organization? Not, 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 not that I'm aware of. Um, like I said, it's just so happened that all four states I've worked in have had something similar um usually through the state library association is usually who's um okay. overseeing those awards so all right so you're not um we're not um we don't have to answer to anyone above us <laughs> no <laughs> that's good. it's kind of locally run locally as far as the state um mm -hmm. locally run um it's good to have that you know local control and then as far as the programming and uh is there any sort of uh, someone's asking about is there any um curriculum or programming suggestions or um anything like in the manual about things that like you know ideas for what libraries and schools can do um as far as programming for this that there are there are um and if um if you're if you're not certain about buying the entirety of the manual, you can buy previous manuals piecemeal for like a dollar to two dollars a piece if you wanted to take a look at some of them and just see kind of what's being offered and see if it's worth hmm. the fifteen dollars. But there is um there there are there is information about like how to kind of coordinate voting for your school or your library. Um, like I said, different programs that you can do. There are battle of the books questions and trivia oh, and things like that. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else. A lot of um, there's also, depending, um, the volunteers for the, the committee also help write the manual. So I know there's like word searches and things like that that go with different books from the list. Um, so there's there's a lot of options for you if you're if you're interested in purchasing the manual, which um, I think is incredibly helpful. 
Good. So, so a library, because I, I know typically we hear, we think of this is something that the schools do, and we've always been trying to get more um, libraries in, involved in it. So if you've never done this before at your library, you're not going in like blind. <laughs> right. You Yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We, we have a wheel for you to look at and use. <laughs> Nice, nice, okay. Um, all right, Ooh, so we do have a question too here. Okay, so how does it work if a school is doing this and the public library is doing this um, with, uh, is there a potential for kids to vote more than once? Like if they do it with their school and how do you, how are you supposed to not let them vote more than more than once? Like if they're also, you know, their school's running a program and the library's running a program, is that going to be in conflict or confusion? How is that? Is there um, a way to figure that out? You know, we we haven't really talked about like kind of the, I guess like the quality control of votes in that way. Um, my understanding is most of our votes, that the lion's share of our votes do come from the public schools. Um, I do think that public libraries, I don't know that you would have as much overlap as you think you would, because I think a lot of kids would be like, oh, I've already done that. <laughs> like, mm. um, at, at least that's what, that's, I what I, that that's what I get when I ask kids about it, is they're usually like, oh, I did that at school, or I did that with, um, you know, Mrs. Kelly, who's the, the elementary librarian. So <laughs> um, I don't, yeah, so it's not something we've really talked about. And if a kid does happen to vote twice, I don't know that it's the end of the world. <laughs> mm. Okay. Hopefully most of the kids would just be honest and say, eh, yeah, that's, that's it. been my experience is most of them are pretty honest about it. Uh, there, yeah. Let's uh, see, so you got the how the how the compiling of the votes and everything would be done. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is something too that um, someone was mentioned actually just mentioned. You could work together with this you know, mm -hmm. partner with the school and the library. It doesn't have to be two separate programs. They said, you know, mm -hmm. we you know bring the school to you know talk to each other, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, coordinate yes. with the school to make sure that we are you know we're doing things that work together or that both promote this. Uh, so. From the library, we can tell them, okay, when you go to the school, this is what you're going to do, and the school can say, well, here's what's happening at the library related to this, but we're all in, doing this together for this one um, program. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would be a, a great way to partner with them, and rather than just trying to do mm -hmm. two separate things, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, opening those lines of communication always always helps. <laughs> All right. Oop. There we go. Sorry, getting things rearranged on my screen here. All right. Um, all right. I don't see anybody have any other questions. We still got about 15 minutes left. We're almost to the end of our um, hour here. Um, does anybody have any um, questions of anything else that you want to ask? of Anne about the program, about um, what's happening with it. I like there is the history there too that you can go back and see what was done um, in the past uh, with the program because we know it's um, been around for a long time, yeah. Um, any uh, ideas or anything you want to share from your libraries of how you've been doing uh, the programming for this, either at your school or your public library, I type in the question section there. Because we can, um, since we are getting down to the end of our time, we don't want to go too far over if we don't have to. Um, and I can't see if you're typing things, so I just have to wait and see if anything comes up until you're done typing. <laughs> um, Uh, ah, a clear a question about the new level for the young adults. Yes, that will be available in which year? 
So it will be the school year 2025 to 2026. So not next year, but the year after, which I know feels like it's forever from now. <laughs> um, but as I mentioned, like the, the group of people who are reading right now are reading for that selection year. So if you're interested in reading for the young adult list, please do let us know. Um, we're still trying to fill out that group of people. Okay, great. Yeah. So not 2024, 25, the one after. Yep, got to wait because right. it takes a lot of prep to get this all ready for the future years. Yeah. Yep. But young adults can are welcome to read anything on the other levels right now. Yes, absolutely. And, um, if they want to give their. Um, do we know anything? Anything? Is that is the potential list for the 25, 26 year? available anywhere or you're still working on it? Um, so it is not the only people it's available to right now or the people on the selection committee who are working in Goodreads in that group for it. Right, because they haven't finished yet. Yeah, so yeah, so we don't have a final list yet, so there's no list to put out. Um, but like Ann said, if you're interested in wanting to know more about it, sign up where, can you show where that was again, the how to yes. join the group here, yeah. So if you would like um, to be can... part of that selection group here under selection group, there is all the way at the bottom a Google form for you to fill out with your information. And then you can get involved in making those choices for the new and any of the any yeah. of the levels, of course. Um, but if you're interested in what's happening and what they're discussing for the new uh, level, the new young adult level, that would be the way to get involved in that. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? I'll make sure everybody has a chance to ask whatever they wanted to ask about the program. Um, any, uh, while I'm waiting to see if anything comes up here, any any final words, uh, Anne, of encouragement or? Um, I guess, yeah, I guess I we just, we appreciate all the support from librarians across Nebraska. Um, continuing to be so supportive of the award and continuing to promote it with their students and um, their patrons. Um, and we we hope to continue offering um, quality um, quality programs and curriculum for you guys and things like that. So um, mm -hmm. any feedback is greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Yeah, if you're an NLA member, get involved. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it, yes. Great. Um, I would have a comment just saying, I've enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to labeling nominees and winners. <laughs> <laughs> so you may be getting an order in for some of those stickers. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, and yeah, and you can use those stickers to, you know, like I said, there is the list of the previous ones. You can mm -hmm. go, you know, start marking the previous ones too, so people know previous award winners mm -hmm. um, that you may already have in your library. Um, Absolutely. They said 1981 was the first award year of this so there's a lot <laughs> that there um, are there are very many <laughs> titles there yeah um so um definitely um buy some stickers and uh find all these books that you might have in your collection already um they said putting a year on them is a good idea too definitely yeah you can you know add on to the sticker yourself which particular year it was for so people know mm -hmm. um, how that all works Add your own little year sticker there. Good suggestion. All right. I think we will I'll work on wrapping it, um, wrapping it up and do my closing here since we're getting to the end of our hour. Um, thank you everyone for um, attending. If you have any questions, anything about the program, um, reach out. There's I see the contact us link right there on the uh, Golden Silver page as well um, that you can link. Um, you can click on if you have any, um, you know, obviously there's a Google form if you want to just you know, participate, but if you just have any general questions, uh, reach out to them and reach out to maybe anyone on the committee, which is there on the website that will um, get back to you. And thank you so much, Anne, for um, being with us today and talking about the Golden Sword Award. I hope a lot more libraries, and we've done sessions about the Golden Sword over the years here on Encompass Live and always you know, encouraging more public libraries to definitely get involved. I know some people think of it as a school thing, but it's not, it's a children's thing.
Absolutely. Thank you so much. So, absolutely. All right. So, uh, thank you. I've got some thank yous coming in as well from the audience. <laughs> thank you, Anne. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, as I said, um, we are recording the show and it will be available on our website. Here is the event page uh, for today's show. It does have a link to the Golden Sower um, website that um and was showing so you'll have a link right to that when you get the um when i let you know about the recording uh, down here this will be changed to have a link to the recording that will go up on youtube and the slide presentation that ian is going to send to me um, i'm gonna pop over to our encompass live page to show you how to get to all of this this is our uh, main encompass live page if you use your search engine of choice and just type in encompass live the name of our show we are the only thing called that on the internet right now no one else is allowed to use it <laughs> it's not official but <laughs> um you'll find a link to our main page and a link to our archives our upcoming shows are all listed here and our link to our archives is at the under um, at the bottom here uh, this has got the most recent shows at the top here. So today's will be there, should be up and done and ready by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest. So everyone, um, it'll be here. Everyone who attended today's show and registered from today's show will get an email from me that I, I'll send out. Um, it also goes out to our mailing lists and onto our social media. And it will there will be a link, like this is the one from last week, a link to the recording and a link to the slide presentation will be added um, to this event page. It's posted here. Um, while we're here in the archives, I'll show you there is a search feature if you want to search and see if we've done um, any shows on a particular topic before you can. Uh, you can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just um, very current. Um, and that is because this is the full show archives for Encompass Live. And if you look at if you can see it behind the right, we've got a long, you know, the scroll bar is huge. Um, and that is because this goes back to, and I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom because it is huge list. Uh, but this goes back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we're 15 years old. Ah. Um, um, so, but do pay attention if you are watching any of our archives to the original broadcast date. They're all dated here when they first were done. Um, some shows will be fine, will stand the test of time, be great, good, useful information, but some things will become old and outdated. Um, products and services may change drastically and may no longer exist. Um, links might not work. Uh, people may work at different libraries um, than they did when they presented to it for us. So just pay attention if you're watching an old show about the original broadcast date. But um, we will always, you know, as libraries do, we keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a place to host our recordings, which right now all of our recordings are on our YouTube channel, um, we'll always have them up there for everyone to um, look at. Um, as I said, uh, when the recording is ready, I'll send an email out to our mailing list and to our um, registered and pre-registered attendees. We also push out on our social media. Um, we have a Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like. Um, what we do reminders here, reminder to log in today's show, meet the speaker. Um, here's a remind the announcement of the recording of the previous um, week's show. So you'll get notifications about what we're doing here. We also do um twitter and uh, instagram um and we have a hashtag a little abbreviation of our show name and comp live um that we tag things in else everywhere too so if you're looking for more social media type posts about encompass live you will find them out there as well so that will wrap it up for today's show thank you again everyone for being here thank you again ann um that wraps up for today. I hope you'll join us for next week's show when we will be talking about racial and gender bias in search. Um, Marcella Fredrickson will be joining us. She's from the UNC Wilmington. And uh, this is a session that she did at Computers and Libraries Conference. I can't remember now. <laughs> I saw the session at a as a conference elsewhere and asked her to um, recreate it here on our um, show. So she's going to be talking about search and racial and gender bias and search that you may need to um, be aware of and dealing with it in your library. So please do um, sign up and join us for that show and any of our other shows we have coming up. As you can see, we've got everything booked up through this year and I'm even starting to get January 2024 sessions on the calendar. So. Um, Thank you, everybody, and we'll hopefully uh, see um, some of you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>